Hello and welcome to another episode. Um, hopefully this will be better now. Um, some people have said that the music was too loud and my voice is too quiet. So I've turned the music down and I've boosted my audio. So I hope this is better for you. Let me know in the comments if this is better. It's been a while since I took a look at any VTTs, um, mainly because I haven't found any new ones. Um, but I recently came across Albert Rodeo and the web address is albert.rodeo. Uh, when you get to the home screen, you've got a choice of two things. You can start a game and you can join a game. Uh, when you start a game, you have the option of setting a password so that uh, random people can't join in. And if you join a game, um, you put the link in and join and password if necessary. I've already set one up, so let's go. And this is the welcome screen to Albert Rodeo. So the first thing we've got up here is who is signed in. Uh, on the left hand side, we have got some setting uh, configuration. At the top here, we've got a dice tray. On the right, we've got some tokens. And then we've got our controls on the left hand side. So let's have a look at on the left hand side. So the first of all is this is how we change our nickname. So I've got to set it to GM, but if you wanted to set it to whatever you want, you can change it in this box. Click change and that will appear in the left hand side and with you in the brackets after. Beneath that is the add party member. This is the link that you send to your players. So if you click on that, you will see the game ID at the top or the whole link that you can email to your players or text them or whatever they want. And when your players appear, they will appear in this left hand bar down the side here. Third icon down is start radio stream. This is experimental, but using web uh, RTC um, permissions, it should send your audio over the web as they join your, as they're in your game. But as I said, it's experimental, so try at your own risk. Fourth one down is a timer. You can set a timer from hours, minutes and seconds. And all this does is starts a bar along the bottom. So if we set it to 15 seconds, you will see that this bar will appear on the bottom and slowly count down to the bottom, a real time uh, timer. And it will appear in all of your uh, participants screens as well. Um, doesn't seem to be um, any notification that the time is ended, the bar just ends. And then we've got a settings tab where we can change to a light theme or the dark theme. We can have the um, token size set here, clear ca uh, the cache. None of this, uh, the uploaded stuff is saved on the web. It is all saved on your local browser cache. If you go onto a different computer and log onto the same website, any changes you've made will not um, be carried over because it's saved on your local computer. If you want to get rid of uh, the files, you can clear your cache or you can erase all your content and reset and everything will be lost. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get up, set up a scene. So we click on the select map up here and we've got some blank one, uh, a blank one, which is we're currently on. And then we've got some generic. We have wood, water, grass, sand, stone. So let's pick grass and we can set the columns for images that we import. Um, we can pick the grid size if there's one and there's some other advanced features here. Um, for this map, the choice we've got are fog, drawings and tokens. So we'll pick grass and there we have our desktop and whatever we have on here, we will share with our players. So basically, uh, this is a bit like some of the other VTTs I've, shown, I've shared with you. Um, no character sheets or anything like that. It's for sharing a screen, rolling some dice, moving some tokens around, um, lightweight. So we have our um, desktop. The hand icon here will move the item around. I'm going to jump down to the drawing tool. Um, we have a freehand selection, so where we can just draw wherever our mouse is. So if we're drawing a cave that the character is going into, if we want to change color, we can do so. We have different colors. We've got some water going through. You can 
So that is a nice simple line tool. We have our bucket tool, which, which does areas. Again, it's using the same color. And basically you click once with the left hand mouse and you can fill an area in. And as you travel around, as you can see where it goes, it fills in nice and simple. Uh, then we've, we have an erase all tool further down. So let's get rid of those. So give us a bit of room. Then we've got our straight line tool, which allows us to draw our corridors. And it's left click release when we get to the point. So if you're drawing in your corridors, nice and simple. And you're noticing we're snapping to grid on this one. We have our square box tool for drawing our squares. And you can also um, be use this for doing your area of effects. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What we can also do is uh, disable the blending on this so that um, if we want solid colors, we, we click on that. If you want say transparent ones, you can see we got the same transparency. Let's change the color again. We've got the circle tool, which starts again, snaps the grid, but it starts where your mouse starts and works outwards. So you can draw your circles. And we've got our triangular tool, which starts at the top. And again, we can move it around so we can do cones of effect. So for example, if we're doing a cone of effect, we can do that. And again, we can erase all, or we can use the eraser tool and basically just click on an item and it will remove each item. If you draw a line, everything you draw a line across will be deleted. And you've also got the undo and redo buttons on the left hand side. So that is your simple drawing tools for your desktop. Moving down, we'll come back to Fog of War because that is more to do with when we've got maps with um, terrain and that sort of things on it. The measuring tool, a nice simple measuring tool, we drag across and it will give us our distances between two points. So from there to there, we can set our scale. So if we got 10 foot squares, we can set for 10 feet. And now when we draw a line across one square, it will be 10 feet to the five feet. So that's nice and easy. And then we've got our grid distance tool, which shows you the grid. We've got our line tool, which does the lines. And then we've got what they call the, I think it's the block tool, which does blocks. I'm not too sure what the difference between these two is, but uh, ex experiment away and you'll see for yourself how those work. And then we've got a laser pointer tool. So if you want to point to something for the players, there's our laser pointer tool. We've got some pre-configured uh, icons on the right hand side. Uh, some generic items and we can just drag these out and plop them down use our hand token and we can move them around so we can have our tokens on here if we double click them we can put a halo around them of different colors we can scale the size up and down we can rotate them and as the gm we can make them invisible so they can't be seen on the player screen and we can lock them in place so that nobody else can move them, including ourselves, until they're unlocked. So there's is your generic tokens. What happens if you want to bring your own tokens in, which you can do, you click the plus sign at the bottom. As you can see, I've already brought one in. Click on the uh, item to import it, and then go to your tokens. So we'll go to some tokens. What we've got, um, some Devin ones. Let's click that one, that'll do nicely. We can set the default size, so it's a one square grid, or is it a larger one? Let's make this one bigger. And with a drop down, we can change the name, so we'll call this bug. Category, whether it's a character, or a prop, or a vehicle mount. Um, we will call this one a prop. That's not a prop, is it? It's a, a character. I'll come to why that's important. Hide in sidebar is where it appears in the sidebar, so you can see, and click done. So now when we scroll up and we drag our bug on, it should be double size. And as you can see, as a PNG, it appears translucent at the appropriate areas. 
and you're going to be asking what are the differences between the um, different types. So let's pick another one. So I'll draw another one in and this time let's go for something see so if we can find animals. So we've got a horse or something like that. A polar bear. Let's have a, a nice white polar bear. We're going to make it size two. This time we're going to make it a vehicle or mount. And the reason we're doing this is that if we bring the polar bear in and we stick a character on top of it, when we go to move it, the two will move together. How cool is that? <coughs> so the order is characters go on top, then I think it's props and then mounts underneath. So if you stick a character on top of a mount, when you move it, it will move. If you want to rotate them both together, click on the bottom one and the top will rotate, the bottom one won't, but at least then you can still move them around. Props are for things like um, chairs or something like that. I'm not sure if I've, have I got any props like that. I don't know. Tokens. Let's have a look. This is now I'm live. You can guarantee that I'm not going to find. Oh, there we go. Here's a prop. So let's have a cryogenic chamber. We'll make that one and we're going to make this a prop. I think the colors are a bit off because of the theme I'm using. Um, so let's have a prop. So if we bring a prop in, the character will go over the prop. But if we move the prop, it will not move with it. The bear will go on top of the prop because it, it goes from prop mount to characters. And if we move them, there we go. And, and again, with these, we can put halos around them, change the colors. Uh, and the size if you want to and the rotation and the visibility so those are your props to get rid of any of these from the desktop you just drag it and drop it down on the bin and plop it will disappear although it will still appear on the left hand side you also know with these edit tokens there that as you go to the edit tokens and you click on them you can delete them from here so if you no longer want that token in you can remove it and it disappears from the sidebar and it also removes from here. If you remove one that is on the tabletop and click done, then you will get this question mark because it doesn't exist. And then again, just drop it onto the bin and it will disappear. So that is our um, simple tabletops. Uh, zooming is by scrolling in and out with your mouse. Pan is on the pan tool, hold the left hand and move it around. Moving tokens is just using your left mouse button as well. So before we get on to the coolest part, let's have a look at the dice tray. So clicking up here will bring up a dice tray um, and you can roll your dice in here. The bottom symbol means that if you click that on so the world is shown that all the dice rolls will appear on the left hand side for your party. Uh, and all the other players will be able to see your dice rolls. Click it off and your dice rolls will be private for the GM. I like my dice rolls to be seen no matter what I'm doing. So we can roll our d20 and there's the dice rolled. It gives us the result. We can re-roll it and again it will give the dice number. We can pick it up and roll it as well and it will bounce around. If you want to get rid of it, click the X. If we want to add 2d6, we can add 2d6 and re-roll those and it will total them up for us, giving us the uh, total result and it will also put it in the um, individual dice rolls. If we want to just roll one dice, it'll keep the other dice as the three and this one now becomes a two and it changes the dice rolls. We can also add a d10 to that and this way you can have multiple dice types You've got all the dice types you need, D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, D20, and of course, your D100. So let's roll our D100 dice. If you don't like the dice colours, you can change them. So we've got a Galaxy, Sunrise. The metal dice actually roll differently as well. So let's get a, a metal dice, roll that, and you'll see that a metal dice, because it's heavier, it doesn't roll as far as one of the plastic dice and roll as much so that's quite a cool effect and whatever is the last one that you picked here let's have a walnut dice 
whatever the last dice type you pick to roll, any other dice you pick will be of that dice type. Okay, if you have a large dice pool, and let's say you want to roll 10 d6, that's, you can make the dice tray bigger and add your 10 d6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. And now when you re-roll them, they're spread out, so there's a chance of cocking them. If you reduce it, then there's more chance of the dice being cocked. So that is why you would alter the dice size. So that's very nice. And all of your dice rolls, as long as you've got that world, will appear in the left-hand side. And you can switch the dice tray off as well when uh, you want to move around. So what about custom um, custom maps? Well, I've got a custom map that's uh, gone in here, but let me show you how you bring a custom map in. So we go to our map tool and we click the plus sign. And for now, if we want a map, let's go to our maps and find some maps and we'll pick a swamp. Now, the thing with this is, if you know what, how many columns and rows there are, you can set it so it's equal. Um, I have no idea how many of this are, so I'm going to go with 30 and 30 for now. I can set the square grid, show the grid or, or not. We can snap to grid. We can set the quality as original or make it ultra high. We can allow others to put drawings on and put tokens on. Well, we want that. And do we want others to, do we want others to put fog on? No, we don't. So now there is our map. It's put the um, the grids on, and if we drag a token out, we didn't put snap to grid on, so it won't snap to grid. But you can see our tokens on here. So if you download an image, um, you need to count how many grids that uh, squares that are across and up. Set that into your um, edit field and they will align up. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So let's have a look at the Fog of War tools. And I'm going to do it on a, a, the other layer. Let's get rid of that token by getting rid of it. Go into our map. And this is one a map from Lost Mines of Fandelva. Not Fandelva, Hors uh, Hors of the Dragon Queen. This is the Hunting Lodge. So let's switch to our fog tools. So the fog tools we've got are is a line where we draw a line to follow the edges of something. And when we've finished, click on the tick or click hit return and that will fill the fog in, which is ideal if you're following um, rooms. And let's get uh, rid of uh, some of this uh, fog for the moment and I'll show you how we how we draw it. So with the drawing tool, all we do is click on the first and he says making a complete and utter mess of that. Let's get rid of that and we'll start again. Come on Jones, sort it out. So we click. And every place you put a point you click on, you fill in the fog. So we do this again. So we click once, click, click, and return. And then all you do is click, 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 and return, and that fills it in. So that's the first type. This is the eraser tool where it any piece of fog that you click on will erase it. The next one is the fog brush. And the way this works is that a bit similar to the other draw brush, you can actually draw round, ideal for caves. So as you can see, wherever your mouse does, it does a brush like that. So that's quite nice. And then we've got the toggle fog. So we can toggle fog off. So the fog is off, but it leaves a stripe for the GM so he knows where the fog is. Now we can toggle fog back on there. 
we eat uh, with the um, with this one if we set this around the edge like this and then we use the edge snapping you can see with the edge snapping if we leave gaps it crosses over if we enable snapping what it does is when it comes to another set of fog it butts up to it and makes a nice joint so there's no gaps like we had here so that's the snapping we can switch the fog for the GM to be black so that uh, we can see what the player sees and this is exactly what the player sees or we can see it as opaque so that um, we can see where our tokens are underneath so for example let's drag the token out if the token is here as the GM I can still see it but however if I was the player what the players would see is this the tokens wouldn't be seen so the tokens would be hidden um, the all of these um, has been put on with the plus tool if we use the minus tool it will do the reverse so now with the tool it will remove um, exactly as we did before it will remove instead of adding it and same with the the square tool whatever we fill in will now remove the fog so nice and simple so the tool with the cloud on uh, what it does it hides the fog from the player so if for uh, example they are moving into this room with the high top fog I can just click on the whole room and that fog will be hidden if I click on the eraser tool when I click on something it deletes it completely and you can't get it back so it all depends on whether you want the um, fog to be removed completely or it, you just want it to disappear while they're in that room again you've got the undo and the redo buttons as we had before so let's go back to over here now and let's clear this fog up so we can delete all this rubbish that we put on here and let's move out and let's add some proper fog to this so now we're going to use the line tool for the left nice and quick and return and you can see it is super quick for putting fog down just follow the lines it leaves a nice triangle over so you've got covered and return um, we'll get rid of this bit over here and for this tool we're going to i'm going to use the square to the um, area tool so we're going to trace down here across here down here and across and you can see it nice and quick for doing irregular shapes that really is handy um, and obviously I've done it all wrong because I've had the minus on not the plus so and that's what you gotta be careful of so let's put this back in now you might be better off when you're placing it to use the complete black tool so you can see you've got it and let's go back to this one as you can see with the black you can really see where it's at there we go so as your players come up to the uh, as your players come up to the first room you've got the choice of the fog of war whether you're just going to switch that room off and they will see that then and step into it or if you're if they're peeking through what you can do is you can put a little gap in as they're peeking through so let's do a minus so you, uh, you, you get the idea um, so that is a, a nice simple tool it's got everything you want in there I really like that it's got these um, blanks that you can 
just if you want a quick map then onto the drawing tools and you can zip along yeah you've got a corridor with rooms with the corridor off to the left you can change the colors if you want to you've got um, a door here and a door here um, and you can also um, everything follow steps to the grid and and it either goes to the grid or it goes to the side I'm not sure if we get um, a swap map snap yes when we don't snap to grid I'm guessing that the if you don't have the snap to grid on these then they're not going to go on the um, indices but if you switch the snap to grid on when you draw now they'll be snapped to the grid so I hope that was of some use to you. So that's Albert Rodeo. Check it out. It's a great little tool um, and great for online games. So that's all for me now. I'll catch you all on the flip side.